I've lived in Pembrokeshire for 25 years now, and uh, I've painted and drawn the northwest of the county. It's um, characterised, I suppose, by um, a slightly tougher landscape than the rest of Pembrokeshire. It's a landscape of small fields, uh, rock coming through the, the surface of the land. Um, and it's a landscape which, uh, I mean, can be very beautiful at times, but also it's quite a tough landscape. A landscape in which um, there's a balance between uh, man's uh, attempts to control the, the landscape uh, and also the, the, the landscape actually fighting back. Uh, something about the landscape which I suppose you would have to call uh, perhaps a slow violence, the destruction of these attempts to bring it under control. So we find patterns of small fields, for example, actually disappearing under masses of bracken and scrub. But it's this, this quality uh, um, that I find important, um, contrasting it to landscape of southern England, for example, which uh, you might find a bit anodyne, is, is so controlled, is, is ploughed over and structured. There, there is this edginess about this landscape, uh, um, which is an important element in the, the drawings that I make. It's something that I try to echo in actually making the drawings, the paintings. This is also a landscape in which the past is very evident. Um, it's been a, a poor area. Um, so much of what was there perhaps two or three thousand years ago, or elements of it at least, if not much, is, is still there today. Um, it, it's very evident we we actually live in this landscape um, side by side with um, uh, uh, standing stones with field patterns from perhaps the dark ages field patterns from the iron ages still actually in use and this element of the past being present is an important thing something again which is absent from possibly quite a lot of landscape in southern England for example when I go out and make drawings in the landscape, sketchbook drawings, um, I'm, I never really go out with a fixed idea. I mean, the whole idea is, is I go out as far as possible with an open mind to see what happens. Um, what I find, I have to say, is, is much to do with uh, my own feeling about the landscape as what, actually, what is actually there. Uh, it depends just as much on me as on the landscape. But if I'm out in the landscape, I'll, I'll walk around, I'll dr drive from place to place, um, and quite often, <laughs> slightly embarrassingly, the ideas for uh, paintings and drawings quite often come more from the things that I catch out of the corner of my eye when I'm driving from one place to the other than if I'm going for a determined walk uh, in an area of the landscape. I go out really just to try and see what happens. Uh, there might be some sort of event of light in a dark landscape which suddenly focuses uh, the feeling of the landscape. Um, there might be in a winter landscape, for example, uh, an upland stretch of moorland and rock, uh, black, blue rays in, in the sky, uh, ochres, red browns, and then within that, for example, the, uh, a small, brilliant patch of orange lichen on the stems of dead gorse, something like that, which seems to trigger a feeling uh, or somehow a uh, direct response to the landscape. On the other hand, uh, the landscape can be very different, different parts. It's a landscape of great variety. Uh, in early summer, for example, May, June, uh, the patches of woodland, you know, an in interior of a woodland can be an, uh, an explosion of, of powerful greens, uh, uh, something that I reflect quite a lot in making the paintings. When I come into the studio in the morning, um, 
And I'm fairly disciplined about this. I mean, I'm disciplined about working time. It's something I value greatly. I mean, to be able to come in every morning and, and paint or draw is, is a marvellous thing. Um, but when I'm actually in here, the discipline is coming in to draw and paint um, is important equally when I'm actually here to paint or draw, to work on things that I actually am excited by and I want to work on. Um, so there's, in a sense, there's a, a discipline of, uh, of maintaining a freedom about what I'm actually doing while I'm in here. Um, and when I first come in, very often, you know, the, the thing that I've been working on the evening before, which was looking good, now, of course, uh, very often looks pretty rough, pretty horrible. <clears throat> there are things that you can say you know about a painting. I mean, it's easy to, to know what to do in terms of um, perspective and, and so forth and so on, but very often, um, I mean, you simply you come to a point where, where you really just don't know what on earth is you're going to do. So the, f the first part of the morning, or the very beginning, the first half hour perhaps, or, or possibly an hour, I tend to spend walking around avoiding what I've got to do, uh, it's a fairly, fairly common thing. The drawings made in the studio are based on sketchbook drawings. Uh, started out actually on the spot but clearly these drawings are something very different from the from just a, a, a sketchbook study which is something done at one particular place one particular time these large drawings are uh, not just a record of the landscape they're really about the relationship with the landscape so when I'm making them in the studio I'm actually bringing into play not only the information in the sketchbook drawing but the, a whole series of memories made of, from drawings of the same sort of place or similar places made over 25 years that I've been working in this landscape in North Pembrokeshire. The painting develops as a complex web of things, uh, and not just as a response to the landscape, of course, a painting will have its own integrity, or a drawing will have its own integrity, and the struggle is to try and make the drawing work in it, as, as a thing in itself. I mean, at some stage, um, the drawing has to have its own completeness. It doesn't matter what you bring to it, whatever you bring to it, the drawing might not work, um, and it has to develop, in a sense, its own quality, its, its complete character, uh, um, self-sufficiency. Uh, so a lot of the work going back and back to making uh, a drawing or making a painting is to try and uh, achieve the demands of the drawing itself, not just the, uh, the responses to what the drawing is about. I grew up in Wembley, uh, in the, uh, the northwest suburbs of London, and in my urban drawings and paintings, there's always a, a very ambiguous quality. I have a, a real love-hate relationship with urban subject matter. Um, I remember that on the one hand, the, the small uh, areas of land that were, were left uh, in the suburbs of my childhood uh, from the landscape that was previously there, Longford landscape of fields, until the 1930s when these big areas of uh, suburban housing were built. They had an enormous poignancy for me. 
Um, I've always been fascinated with the, the countryside, things in the countryside, wildflowers, butterflies, birds and so forth. And in a sense, these touches of uh, the landscape left, hedges, old oak trees and so forth, were wonderful, but also, in a sense, very uh, worrying that they were hemmed in by later developments. So, in, in the drawings, I think it's quite clear, the urban drawings, there's a celebration on the one hand of, of something that can be very beautiful, a, a tough urban landscape. Um, so, there is this... Um, love-hate thing the, uh, about making the urban landscapes, something that's both very beautiful but also um, worrying, disturbing and uncomfortable.